New details at 6 on a brutal attack against a Harris County sergeant at the county jail. As questions are raised about staffing issues, we're getting answers from the leaders in charge. It made me upset. I was frustrated. I felt like they needed to do more. Another attack on a Brazosport ISD student. And tonight, the mother of the ninth grader attacked in a bathroom wants to know why this happened and what's being done about it. State energy leaders promise to keep your power on this winter and a closer look at the plan that not everyone is convinced will work. I think it's a huge step forward, uh, we're, but, we're, but we're not there yet. Congress is on the verge of making historic changes to the military justice system after the death of Fort Hood Army Specialist Vanessa Guillen. But some say the changes don't go far enough. An inmate accused of brutally attacking and sexually assaulting a female sergeant inside Harris County Jail faced a judge today, and we've learned he was already behind bars for a previous sexual assault charges. Tonight, we're hearing from a former detention officer who describes the unsafe conditions. ABC 13's Brooke Taylor is live with more for us. Brooke. Gina and Eric, that detention officer telling me it's always been her dream to work in law enforcement. So really a dream come true when she started working at the jail here. But she says after what she dealt with firsthand and what she saw, she tells me you couldn't pay her to come back to work here. You're just a body in there. You, they don't they don't care about you. A former Harris County jail detention officer who wants to stay anonymous describing unsafe conditions inside the jail. This is an inmate Jeremiah Williams faced a judge today accused of sexually assaulting a female sergeant inside of her office. Sheriff Gonzalez says Williams went to a scheduled Bible study class, walked out during the session and into her office. Needless to say, it was just a, a brutal attack. Uh, it's something that's shaken us to the core. Williams was listed as a maximum classification inmate. So why was he left to roam around the prison freely? That's something the sheriff is still unable to answer. I'm still investigating in terms of what level he was in the specific, in, did he need an escort or not? That's part of our internal investigation. A recent jail inspection by the Texas Commission reveals major concerns about staff shortages. While the sheriff says they meet the one officer to every 48 inmates ratio, the former detention officer we spoke with says that wasn't the case with her. You know, the area that I worked in required at least two to three of us. And sometimes you can be in there by yourself with 40 or 50 men. After 11 years, the low salary and terrible hours, she says the unsafe conditions just weren't worth it. Sheriff Gonzalez says he's making changes to fix the high turnover rate, including a new plan rolling out in January to give every member of the operations team stable weekend hours so they aren't stretched so thin. He hopes to hire more staff and go above minimal staffing standards for everyone's safety. This isn't something that's never happened. And it's bad. You know, you hear your friends, their anxiety or they're, they're, they're crying and things like that. Yeah, it, it, this is a bad, this is a scary situation. Williams' total bond has been set to $3.5 million. Brooke Taylor, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. A vigil begins in 30 minutes for the Brazoswood High School student who landed in the ICU after being attacked last week. At last check, Cole Hagen was breathing on his own and able to walk. Tonight's vigil will be held at Freeport Community Park. You might recall just yesterday that two more teens were charged in the vicious attack. Police arrested Aiden Holland and Logan Huber yesterday. Reed Mitchell, who was seen there in orange, was taken into custody earlier this week. We are hearing the same rumors that many of you have been hearing about what sparked this violence, but police so far not revealing to us a definitive motive. And tonight, another mom is speaking out about her son's attack on the Brazoswood ninth grade campus, which she says happened a month earlier. Talitha Broussard believes it was a result of negligence by Brazosport ISD. ABC 13's Erica Simon has the story from Lake Jackson. This video is quick, but still hard to watch. We've blurred the faces of the underage kids involved, but it shows to leave the Broussard's son Logan being attacked last month. He suffered a concussion, rib contusions, and hasn't been able to eat or sleep much since. Where's the teachers at? Where's the monitors? Where's the security? The video was widely circulated on Snapchat and speaks to a problem Broussard says is bigger than people realize. While charges were filed on Logan's assailant and he was punished, Broussard says she was never told how. 
In fact, she believes Brazosport ISD isn't doing enough as a whole to snuff out bullying or a culture of violence. Our kids need to go to school to learn and feel safe and protected, but you're not doing that. You're not doing your part. You're negligent. Broussard isn't alone in her frustration. While I was speaking to her today, a parking lot full of parents came up to share their concerns. Victoria and Eric Green's seventh grade daughter had enough of a girl who was bullying, taunting, and pushing her at Lake Jackson Intermediate School, so she punched her. Despite being an honor student, having perfect attendance, and never Never being in trouble before, she was sent to alternative school for 35 days and charged with assault. We do not condone fighting. We do not condone fighting. But it's at a point you have to protect yourself. This girl, she's walking around. She's still bullying other people, and they've done nothing. Parents tell me they've shown up to school board meetings and attempt to get answers, but they can't seem to get them or get their agenda items on the schedule. Things have gotten so contentious, BISD Parent Teacher Advocacy Group on Facebook was created. Over the last few months, now we're finding out a lot more about disciplinary issues, multiple assaults, terroristic threats, um, and we feel that there's not adequate communication and that these issues are not being dealt with appropriately. The district didn't give me answers about everybody's concern, but did say this about the attack on Brizard's son, quote, after receiving information about the incident that occurred November 8, 2021 on the Brazoswood 9th grade campus, our staff immediately took action. Law enforcement stepped in and the student was arrested and removed from school. We take all these matters seriously and the student will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. Reporting in Lake Jackson, Erica Simon, ABC 13 Eyewitness News. Well, the district says they have a hearing process for each bullying or assault case, and the best thing for parents to do is go directly to their child's school principal. And if you want to get an item on a school board meeting agenda, you need to go through the superintendent's office. A Klein Kane high school student was expelled after the 15-year-old was accused of making anonymous threats on social media. The district sent out a letter to parents yesterday alerting them about the incident. District police said they're working with the Harris County District Attorney's Office on criminal charges against the teen in question. And Chief David Kimberly says other school districts across the area are seeing similar instances of students making threats on social media, a trend he's calling disturbing. I believe you can see the passion in my voice. I'm a parent. I have kids. I can't begin to express how disappointed we are. We're better than this. As a community, Klein ISD, we are better than this. And to illustrate how serious these types of threats are taken, we've learned the FBI and Homeland Security have offered any resources to help in the investigation. We'll have more on that coming up at 6.30. Okay, lawmakers in our nation's capital appear poised to pass historic reforms to the military justice system, something many advocacy groups have fought to make happen for years. Yes, and they are crediting the family of Vanessa Guillen for pushing it across the finish line after Vanessa was murdered at Fort Hood in April of 2020. ABC 13 Steve Campion has followed this story from the very beginning, and he has the latest for us tonight. Vanessa Guillen's loved ones promised her death wouldn't be in vain after her brutal killing on base at Fort Hood in April 2020. Amid such personal heartbreak, they pushed forward, demanding changes in federal law, forcing changes upon the Army. You finally see all the work is being paid off, and uh, we're here to continue working uh, and continue hopefully changing more laws, um, if that's something that we can do. Congress is about to pass the National Defense Authorization Act. Contained in the massive piece of legislation are historic changes to the military justice system. The biggest mountain that we could move was moved. For now, it's just about moving a little bit more, but I think it's all doable, and I think, you know, our success will, will prove itself. We just want to make sure that if there's any little girls and boys out there that are thinking of being in the military, that they know uh, that they will be protected. Congresswoman Sylvia Garcia told me in a one-on-one -on -one interview today, those reforms include creating an office of the Special Trial Council to handle independent investigations and prosecutions. The bill criminalizes sexual harassment in the military, empowers judges on sentencing, requires notification for survivors on their perpetrators' outcomes, and requires the Department of Defense to track allegations of retaliation. It's a win in the fight uh, against a culture that, that's been entrenched for many years and a culture that, that is about control. Say her name! Vanessa Guillen! 
This afternoon, Vanessa's loved ones say they're crying both tears of sadness and joy. It's been a bittersweet journey. This is something really big that we're proud, you know, we're proud of all the work that we've done, that my sister's death wasn't in vain. And um, after all, we will be saving lives. Well, the Guillen family attorney and Congresswoman Garcia tell us they didn't get everything they wanted in that bill. Yet regardless, it's still a big win for this family that's been fighting for justice since 2020 when Vanessa's body was found along the Leon River. And you can hear more from Vanessa's family in our special Vanessa Guillen, Remember Her Name. It's part of our True Crime series on the ABC 13 app wherever you stream.